Queensland Coal Mining Safety and Health Regulation, 2017. Introduction. This is an abridged summary to assist those studying for their OCE's legislation exam. It is not comprehensive, and it is not a substitute for knowing the legislation. The clause number is listed in the heading. Apply each clause to a practical scenario in your mind. This will help your recall of the legislation. Abbreviations and acronyms. ADG Code. Australian Code for the Transport of Dangerous Goods by Road and Rail, 7th edition. GHS. Globally Harmonised System of Classification and Labelling of Chemicals. SHMS. Safety and Health Management System. SOP. Standard Operating Procedure. Higher Blastability. Drill and Blast Consulting. Drill and Blast Labour Hire. OCE Labour Hire. Coal Mining Safety and Health Regulation, 2017. 6. The SHMS must contain Risk Identification and Assessment, Hazard Analysis, Hazard Management and Control, and Reporting and Recording of Relevant Safety and Health Information. 8. The SHMS must provide for effective communication to each person at a mine of protocols for taking action in life-threatening situations, emergencies, and the location of known hazards that affect safety or health. The system must provide for giving the person immediate notification on matters relevant to the person's safety or health, prompt summonsing for assistance in an emergency, assistance from external entities, communicating with external entities, access by inspectors to the communication details of the external entities, access by district inspector to the emergency contact number for the mine, and notification of known hazards in the mining area to the OCE. 9. It is a requirement to have an SOP for a hazard. 10. Developing SOPs. The SSE must ensure the following steps are taken. SSE must consult with a cross-section of the workforce involved in carrying out the task. SSE must provide a draft SOP to those that were consulted. If the consulting group agree, the SSE formalises the SOP. If the group don't agree, the SSE must obtain further information or advice, explain the new information to the workers, and prepare an updated draft. If the group still disagrees, make a call and prepare the final SOP, and the final SOP must be included in the SHMS. The SSE must ensure that all SOP accords with all matters agreed between the SSE and workers, the SSE's decision on any disagreed matters, and that a record is kept. The SSE must also use acceptable risk management and keep records of the risk management. 11. Accessing SOPs. The SSE must ensure that the mine's current SOPs are easily accessible by each worker and is in a format that is easily understood. Accessing recognised standards. The SSE must ensure that the list of current recognised standards are easily accessible by the mine's workers, and the list and each standard is kept in a format that is easy to use and understand. 13. Types of high potential open cut incidents include unplanned ignition of gas, dust, or a combination of gas and dust, entrapment of a person, electric shock to a person, unplanned event causing the withdrawal of a person from a part of the mine, abnormal circumstances declaration, fire on a vehicle or plant, incident involving an explosive, and any of the following, fire, coal or rock outburst, unplanned movement or failure to stop a vehicle, failure of an electrical equipment or an electrical installation, unplanned ignition or explosion, failure of strata control, exposure to a hazardous chemical, Unforeseen hazard requiring a review of the mine's SHMS. Unplanned immersion of a person in a liquid. Unplanned movement of coal or earth. Structural failure of equipment. And collision involving a vehicle or plant. 14. Types of serious accident and high potential incidents include an incident causing death or serious bodily harm. Unplanned ignition of gas, dust or a combination of gas and dust. Hazardous damage or failure to haulage equipment used to transport a person on a slope. Failure in service of explosion protection of explosion protected equipment. Failure of electrical equipment or installation. Unplanned ignition or explosion of blasting agent or explosive. And major hazardous structural failure of equipment. These are prescribed under clause 201 of the Act. 15. An SHMS must provide for the procedure for the investigation of accidents and incidents, making the investigation findings available to the workers and implementing corrective action for accidents and incidents and include the involvement of the OCE on duty at the time the accident or incident occurred, or if it is not practicable to involve the OCE, a different OCE. 21. A mine must have an SOP for safely accessing exposed electrical conductors. 
The procedure must minimise risk by using controls such as personal locks and or danger tags, positively isolated and tested for dead. 22. A mine must have an SOP for re-energising electrical circuits. 35. Emergencies. The SHMS must provide for managing emergencies and provide for identifying potential emergency situations via risk assessment, minimising risk associated with potential emergency situations, carrying out aided rescue and self-escape of persons from the mine, carrying out emergency exercises, auditing and reviewing the exercises, and involving the OCE to develop and test the emergency management procedures. 37. A mine must have an SOP for action to be taken when a fire is discovered. The SHMS must provide for fire prevention and control, effective firefighting capability, safety of persons fighting fires, and risk assessment to identify all potential fire hazards at the mine. It must also provide for availability of equipment at the mine, location of portable fire extinguishers on or near plant near an identified hazard, and compatibility of firefighting equipment through the mine. 38. An SHMS must provide for first aid. This includes the supply and placement of first aid kits, first aid training, refresher training, the safety of the persons giving and receiving the first aid, the number of people with first aid training. Accidents involving electricity must also be accounted for, including the release of a person from an energized low and high voltage conductor, resuscitating a person in an electrical environment, and managing a person's flash burn injuries. 39. Alcohol must not be consumed at the mine, other than in accommodation building or recreation area specifically designated. 40. A person must not enter a mine or work under the influence of alcohol. 41. The SHMS must account for the risks associated with the excessive consumption of alcohol. Controls shall include the education program, employee assistance program, and assessments to determine a person's fitness for work. This includes voluntary self-testing, random testing before starting work, and testing the person if someone else reasonably suspects they are under the influence. 42. The SHMS must provide for controlling risks associated with personal fatigue, physical or psychological impairment, and the improper use of drugs. It must also provide the following for fatigue. An education program, employee assistance program, maximum hour for a working shift, number and length of rest breaks in a shift, maximum number of hours to be worked in a week or roster cycle. It must also provide the following about drug use voluntary self-testing, random testing before starting or during work, and testing if someone else reasonably suspects a person is impaired. 49. The SHMS must provide for periodic monitoring of the level of risk from hazards at the mine that are likely to create an unacceptable level of risk, provide for notice of any increase in risk to be given to the worker's employer. The employer must then notify their medical advisor. If a worker is exposed to a hazard that presents a risk to their health, that worker's exposure is periodically measured. 55. A hazardous chemical is a substance with a hazard class in the GHS, with some exceptions. 56. A dangerous good is anything defined under the ADG code as dangerous goods or goods too dangerous to be transported. 56A. A register of hazardous chemicals and dangerous goods used, handled, stored or produced and their associated SDS must be kept and readily accessible. 56B. Manufacturers, importers, suppliers must mark or label substances as per the GHS, Globally Harmonised System, Recognised Standard or ADG Code. 56C. Hazardous chemicals and dangerous goods must be correctly labelled. 56D. A hazardous chemical or dangerous good cannot create an unacceptable level of risk to a person when used, handled or stored. 56E. SOPs are required for the use, handling, or storing of hazardous chemicals or dangerous goods with reference to the SDS. 56F. Persons with an obligation under the Act to manage the risk of handling or storing hazardous chemicals or dangerous goods must ensure that the chemicals or goods are protected against damage, secured to prevent loss, misuse, or theft, and if a liquid, bundled to contain spillage. The controls for this obligation must be considered with regard to the risk and potential of the chemical or good. 56G. Appropriate monitoring described in an SOP of dangerous goods and hazardous chemicals must be undertaken to ensure that the location and amount is known, deterioration is checked, fit for purpose, detection of leaks or spills, and identification of theft, misuse, or loss. 56H. An SOP must be developed for dealing with leaks or spills of dangerous goods and hazardous chemicals. 56i. Hazardous chemicals and dangerous goods must be disposed of in accordance with the SDS 
or in accordance with the information in the Act, by the manufacturer or importer, and in a way that does not create an unacceptable level of risk during and after the mine's operations. 60. A record of all boreholes for exploration or drainage must be maintained. 64. Sufficient PPE appropriate for the hazard must be supplied to workers. 65. An SOP is required for using PPE for a task and providing training in the selection, use and maintenance of appropriate PPE. 66. The SHMS must provide for the continued effectiveness of braking systems on fixed and mobile plant and include dynamic testing of service brakes and appropriate testing of parking, emergency and other brakes. A record of brake testing must be kept. 67. The SHMS must provide for minimising risk to persons from rotating or moving machine components via guarding or fencing. 68. An SOP is required that provides for modifying fixed and mobile plant. It must provide for recording modifications, updated drawings and assessing and managing the risk of the modification. 69. The SHMS must provide for a device that sounds a warning before the plant is started. 70. The SHMS must provide for safe access to and egress from fixed and mobile plant that are routinely accessed. 71. The SHMS must provide for regular checks of fixed and mobile plant by a person competent in recognising hazards that might be encountered from the plant. This must occur periodically or if the plant has been stopped for 24 hours before it is started again. 72. A coal mine must have SOPs for the following. Working on tyres and rims of mobile plant. Recovering fixed or mobile plant after an accident. Assembling and maintaining fixed and mobile plant in its operating location carrying persons in mobile plant, selecting, maintaining and using lifting plant, marking lifting plant to show its state of manufacture and capacity, ensuring the safety of persons when plant is being towed, ensure safety of persons involved in servicing mobile plant, and ensuring the safety of persons when heavy plant and supplies are being transported at the mine. 73. A mine must have an SOP for checking mobile plant. It must include the operator to check as soon as practical after taking control of the plant to check that all the plant's brakes, steering, lights and any other safety features are functioning correctly. 74. Plant must be provided with a structure to protect a person in case of rollover or being struck by an object. 75. The use of seatbelts must be determined using risk assessment. If a seatbelt is present, it must be used. 76. An SOP is required for using mobile plant and must include controls for minimising risk from heavy light vehicle interaction and overtaking and parking vehicles. It must be designed with regard to the construction of the mine's roads. 77. If the visibility of the operator is restricted when operating mobile plant, a warning system is required to ensure the safety of the persons near the plant before initial movement. 78. An SOP is required for controlling the risk of an unplanned release of energy from plant, testing for zero potential, taking plant out of service, returning plant to service, and the use of danger, isolation, operation, out of service, personal and restriction tags. If the safety or health of a person is directly affected by plant, the procedure for that person to personally control that risk through the use of a tag or lock. The isolator must be manually operated, isolate all active power conductors, and before unintended reanalgization can occur, and be clearly labeled. 79. An SOP is required for electrical and mechanical equipment that is used for inspecting, testing and maintaining the safe operation of plant at the mine. The procedure must include selecting equipment that is fit for purpose, using the equipment safely, maintaining and testing the equipment. 80. The SHMS must account for using fluids above or below atmospheric pressure. 82. An SHMS must provide for a training scheme for persons at the mine. This includes induction training, refresher training, training needs, recognition of current competencies and prior learning, establishing a training program, appointing persons who are competent to give training, keeping and auditing records of training and assessment, designating tasks that may only be carried out by those assessed as competent, and training workers elected to be safety and health representatives. The training must cover matters relevant to the person undergoing the training. SHMS, operating mobile plant, slinging and moving loads and using lifting devices, and the purpose of inspections and inspection reports. 83. New worker not to carry out task until induction training completed. 84. Refresher training must be completed every five years. 85. Worker not to carry out tasks unless competent. 88. The SHMS must provide for controlling risks from cutting, drilling, digging, etc. near a concealed service. 
89. The SHMS must provide for ensuring that workers' exposure to dust is at an acceptable level and does not exceed prescribed limits. The system must account for monitoring and keeping records of the results. 91. The SHMS must provide for ensuring that workers' exposure to noise is kept at an acceptable level. The exposure does not exceed the national standard for occupational noise. The system must provide for supplying PPE if there is not better control, monitoring and recording noise levels, keeping accessible records, identifying with an appropriate sign where excessive noise levels exist. 92. The SHMS must account for controlling risk associated with working at heights. If a person works at a height greater than 2.4 metres, the system must provide for minimising the person's risk of injury from falling. The system must include SOPs for using PPE to control risk. 93. The SHMS must provide for controlling risk associated with working near a body of water or liquid. 94. An SOP is required checking the condition and identifying hazards of each work area before workers enter the area. 95. An SOP is required for keeping the facilities in a hygienic condition. 96. An SOP is required for each of the following. Confined spaces, manual handling, cleaning using abrasive blasting, high pressure or mechanical or chemical methods, cutting or welding, and laser emissions and other hazardous sources of radiation. 97. Monitoring of deformation of structures required if that deformation may affect the health or safety of a person. 98. The SHMS must provide for reporting and rectifying all defects in plant, structures and procedures. 99. The SHMS must provide for limiting access by persons to parts of the mine, such as sumps, drains and unstable, hazardous or broken ground. 102. Safety and health obligations may be discharged only as prescribed. 104. When mining activities are carried out, at least one OCE is present and contactable. 105. The main responsibility of the OCE is to ensure the safety and health of persons in or around the surface excavation. 106. The OCE must inspect the mine and the active mining area to determine whether the level of risk is acceptable. Before the inspection, the OCE must read the latest OCE's report and acknowledge this in the mine record. The inspection must be done before the activities start and periodically, as required by the SHMS. 107. If an unacceptable level of risk is identified, the OCE must ensure that the thing is made safe immediately. Until then, coal mining operations must be ceased in the area of risk and barriers erected preventing entry. If the thing is not made safe by the next shift, it must be reported to the OCE supervisor and the OCE who will be required to make a similar inspection on the next shift. 108. An OCE must be involved in developing, reviewing and auditing the SHMS. 109. A person must not give technical direction to an OCE unless that person has competencies for the matter at least equivalent to the OCE. 112. An SOP is required for live testing electrical equipment. 115. Explosives must be stored, used and disposed of under AS2187. 116. SOPs are required for transporting explosives, which must address a prescribed list of items, inspecting and reporting on the safety of equipment used at the mine for manufacturing, storing, transporting and delivering explosives, and taking action to make this equipment safe, accounting for explosives brought into the mine, checking for and isolating explosives that have deteriorated, identifying and controlling hazards during the charging and firing of explosives and in particular places. These must include the distance to unrelated activities and ground conditions, finding, recovering and detonating misfired explosives and keeping a record about misfired explosives. 117. SOP required for working on spoil dumps and near excavated faces and provide for inspecting and monitoring the spoil dumps and excavated faces. 118. The SHMS must provide for control measures to prevent persons or plant from falling over edges with a drop of one meter or more and entry of persons to areas containing open drill holes. 125. If high wall mining is carried out, the SHMS must account for that. 128. The SHMS must provide for the design and construction of mine roads, in consideration of the mine vehicles, road material and mining method. Road design characteristics, barriers, curvature, signs, width, etc. must be determined using risk management. A road that primarily handles two-way traffic must be 3.5 times the widest vehicle. 129. An SOP is required for maintaining and watering mine roads. 133. An SOP is required for dumping loads and must include the design, construction and maintenance of safety berms, risks of trucks overturning, safe dump areas and routes and methods of working with the trucks. 134. 
If explosive powered tools are used, an SOP must provide for it. 135. An SOP is required for using fixed and mobile plant near electrical cables. It must provide for recording power line heights where vehicles may pass, keeping a register of vehicles and mobile plant height, fixing standard travelling routes, travelling other than the standard route, inspecting and reporting on routes for plant not in the register, and preventing incidents involving electrical contact. 136. The SHMS must account for each earth moving machine used on a stockpile or coal waste dump to have fire suppression, and if a risk assessment determines that the machine may become buried, a method of stopping the engine independently of the operator. 137. The SHMS must provide for automatic fire detection in tunnels beneath stockpile. 138. SOPs are required for operating equipment on stockpiles and coal waste dumps, which must include detecting and giving notification of voids, taking emergency action if equipment falls into a void, traversing a stockpile, creating loading faces and dozer slots, battering down the faces and slots, supplying uniform lighting to minimise shadows. Ensuring the safety of persons on or near a coal waste dump, in or near heated areas with the potential for spontaneous combustion, working below or near a stockpile or waste dump with the potential for inrush, entering a bin or hopper to free blockages, maintaining a safe atmosphere in a tunnel under a stockpile while persons are working in the tunnel, and evacuating persons from a tunnel under a stockpile. 139. If dump trucks are dumping over an edge, the SHMS must provide for the construction of berms to reduce the risk from trucks toppling over the edge. 140. The SHMS must provide for classifying prohibited articles on site, and persons must not have prohibited articles on site. 141. The SOP for safety inspections by the OCE must be done before an on-site activity is carried out at a workplace and periodically. The results of the inspection, including details of hazards and recommended corrective actions, are to be made available to the mine's workers. 142. The SHMS must account for flammable or toxic gas. This includes identifying and monitoring parts of the mine where gas might accumulate and create a hazard, fixing flammable concentrations, testing before, during and after work has been carried out, and establishing emergency procedures. 143. The SHMS must account for heat stress. 144. The SHMS must account for adequate workplace lighting and emergency lighting. 146. The SHMS must account for trenches and provide for the use of barricades, water ingress and hazardous atmospheres. Schedule 1C. Types of high potential incidents. Unplanned ignition of gas or dust, or gas and dust. Underground spontaneous combustion. Entrapment of a person. Electric shock to a person. Unplanned withdrawal of personnel from a part of the mine. Abnormal Circumstances Declaration Unplanned event that causes only one escapeway to be available A fire on a vehicle or plant Incident involving explosive Any of the following that endangers a person Fire, vent failure, inrush, outburst Damage to equipment used to haul personnel in a shaft or slope Unplanned movement or failure to stop of vehicle and plant Failure in service of explosion protection of explosion protected equipment Failure of electrical equipment or installation, unplanned ignition or explosion of a blasting agent, failure of strata control, exposure of a person to a hazardous substance. Any of the following that endangers a person. Unforeseen hazard requiring a review of the SHMS. Unplanned immersion of a person in liquid. Unplanned movement of earth or coal. Structural failure of equipment. Collision involving vehicle or plant. Schedule 2. Types of serious accidents and high potential incidents. Part 1. An incident causing the death of or serious bodily injury to a person. Unplanned ignition of gas, dust, or gas and dust. Damage to equipment used to haul personnel in a shaft or slope. Failure in service of explosion protection of explosion protected equipment. Failure of electrical equipment or insulation. Unplanned ignition or explosion of a blasting agent. A major structural failure of equipment. Part 2. Unplanned ignition of gas, dust, or gas and dust. Underground spontaneous combustion. Inrush. Failure in service of explosion protection of explosion protected equipment. Electric shock to a person. Unplanned ignition or explosion of a blasting agent. Major failure of strata control. Entrapment of a person. Abnormal circumstances declaration. Major structural failure of equipment. <laughs>